Jesus said, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, we used to play a lot of pickup games like baseball and football. And in case you're not familiar with that process, that's where two kids would be appointed as captains and they would take turns choosing the kids who would be on their team. And of course, the best players, they were the first ones picked. And the worst, well, they were chosen last. And there were plenty of times when I was chosen last, and and it was humiliating for me and for whatever team got stuck with me. Well, in today's Gospel reading, Jesus reminds his disciples that they follow him, not because they chose to do so, but because he chose them. Hence the name of that popular television series we've been studying here at Faith. But imagine what it must have been been like to be handpicked by God. Because all of the prophets were handpicked by him. And we have some very specific accounts of how he called them. Some of them were called in ways that left them quivering in their boots or sandals. Such as when the Lord called Isaiah, who found himself suddenly standing before the very throne of God and angels hovering all around. And Isaiah cried out, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips. Samuel, however, was called in a much less dramatic and terrifying way. He was sleeping in the temple when the voice of the Lord called him. But the voice came in such a way that at first he thought it was Eli, the priest, who was sleeping in the other room. And of course, the Lord called each of his disciples as well. And some of them he called in an amazing way, such as when he called Peter, Andrew, James, and John through that miraculous catch of fish. And when that happened, Peter, much like Isaiah, threw himself at Jesus' feet and said, Depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. And you know what's surprising? There was nothing special about any of these guys. They were just regular people, sinful people, who would have passed unnoticed from the pages of history were it not for one thing, that the Lord had chosen them for his special purpose. Now, I don't know about you, but I've thought, wow, if the Lord called me like that, my faith would be incredible. I would gladly do whatever he called me to do. I would give anything for him. I would lay down my life for him because I would know for certain that he was with me. I would know without a doubt that he was truly my strength and shield and would uphold me with his strong right arm. Maybe you've thought that as well. Well, this is a setup, folks, because hang on to your pews. But the Lord has chosen you. That fact is obvious, and the fact that you were baptized and that you're sitting here this morning. Despite what you may think, you are not here because you chose to follow Jesus. He chose you. In fact, God appointed you for salvation long before you were born. Long before you were a twinkle in your grandpappy's eye. Long before any person on earth ever existed. In fact, God chose you for salvation in him before he ever created the world. You were elected, selected, appointed, chosen, choose whatever verb you'd like, to live eternally with our Lord and all the saints in heaven. Not because there's anything that makes you different from anyone else, but purely by the grace 
love, and mercy of our Heavenly Father who created you. God didn't choose you because you were special. Rather, you are special because God chose you. And the fact that he made you his baptized child is what makes you special. It's the reason that you stand out in his eyes from everyone else in the world. You are God's child, and because you are God's child, you have privileges that the rest of the world doesn't enjoy. For one thing, you get to talk to God with the assurance that he is listening. God doesn't hear the prayers of unbelievers. They're praying to someone else. But he listens to yours. You have the king of the universe on speed dial. When you pray, you have his full attention. He isn't just pretending to listen while he scrolls through his phone, as some of you are probably doing right now. God is leaning in to hear what you have to say. Not only does he listen, but he answers every one of your prayers. Not always the way that you would like him to answer, but in the way that's best for you. Because God chose you, your sins are forgiven. Every one of them. They've been wiped from existence. As far as God is concerned, they never happened. They're gone, kaput, expunged, erased from history. God remembers them no more. Because God chose you, Jesus is with you wherever you go. There is no place on earth that you can go that he is not right there beside you. As St. Paul reminds us, there is nothing in all creation that can separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. In Psalm 139, which we heard a little while ago, David declares, Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall uphold me. So you see, even when we die, Jesus is with us. He walks us to the door as we pass from this world. And he's there to greet us the moment that we emerge on the other side of that door. Because God chose you, he has promised that you will never die. Oh sure, your body will die in this life, but your soul will live on forever with the Lord and with all the faithful who have gone on in the faith before you. And, and, and I'm really looking forward to this part. Just as Jesus was raised from the dead in the body, we too shall get a new body one day. And I am really thankful for that because I'm, I won't have to wear this ostomy pouch forever. So let me tell you, people in this world might not think that you're particularly special, but our Heavenly Father certainly does. He does because He chose you. He sent His Son, Jesus, to die for you. That's how much He loves you. You know, if God had a smartphone, your picture would be on it. And like any proud parent, He would be bragging about you. St. Peter reminds us, you are a chosen race. That doesn't mean that you're better than anyone else, but it does mean that you are greatly blessed. And because we are so blessed, we have a responsibility. Let's go back to our gospel. Jesus told his disciples, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you. And why did he choose them and appoint them? so that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide. So you knew there had to be a catch, didn't you? You know, it's been said that he who has much, of him much is expected. 
And let me tell you, we might not have a great deal in a worldly sense, but in a heavenly sense, we have everything because we are children of God and heirs, heirs with Christ of his heavenly kingdom. Friends, a tremendous responsibility has been entrusted to us. Our Heavenly Father wants us to go and tell others about Jesus so that others may know that they have been chosen too. As St. Paul reminds us, how are they to believe in Him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? Well, guess what? Jesus is sending you. That's exciting. Jesus has chosen you that he may use you to tell others about him. But the Lord doesn't expect you to do that on your own. For one thing, he's, he's blessed you with certain gifts, talents, and abilities and interests to do that. And I don't mean just in a churchy way. Your gift might be restoring old cars or woodworking, or baking pastries. And by the way, if that's your gift, come and see me. Whatever your talent is, Jesus has made you and chosen you so that you can use the gifts you have been given to glorify his name. And we do that whenever we share his love with others. You know, we're continually looking for new ways to do that in our ministry here at Faith. We started a car show last year as part of the Back to the Bricks event so our folks could engage with the public and talk about something that they love. We have a tailgate festival in the fall to give folks who have the gift of hospitality an opportunity to serve the community hot dogs and do face painting and, and just to talk to people as they pass by. And that has heightened our reputation with our neighbors here in Grand Blanc and provided us with an opportunity to talk with them about our church, about our preschool, about Jesus. And I'm sure you're already familiar with what we do to feed the folks at Franklin Avenue Mission on Flint's east side. And just a little over a week ago, we hosted the Grand Blanc Community Cleanup, where we were able to chat with a lot of people from the area. And we're going to continue to build on those relationships so that we can continue to show them the love of Christ and invite them to come into his kingdom as well. Jesus has chosen each of us and equipped us with his gifts that we may bear fruit, that that fruit may abide, that it, is, that, that it may last and eventually bear fruit of its own. And it all started with 12 men in that little country of Judea, and it's now sped, spread like a firestorm across the world. Friends, you are precious in God's sight, because He has chosen you. Let us rejoice in that identity that all we do may be to His glory and that others may know how special they are in His eyes too. To Him be the glory, now and forever. Amen.